early on we talked about it being, um, we had this power of 12, where 12 was going to retreat into uh, that little white place as you, as you came in. Well, just to remind you of the brief, um, it's the 50th anniversary of the CSV, which is uh, the volunteering, they look after volunteering in, in the UK. And uh, they, they want to raise the profile of volunteering, they're, they're, in their words, to reconnect with its existing 150,000 participants, which we found quite surprising that the, the body that represents volunteering in this country only has 150,000 out, out of obviously 60 odd million. Uh, they want to inspire newcomers and fundraise to improve its offering. They've got no money, they've got zero budget. Um, but they want to build on the success of obviously the volunteering of, of, 20, of 2012. So um, we sat together and it all seemed rather easy. So we've either, we've, my view is when something's easy, easy you've, either got, you've either got it straight away or you've absolutely gone off on a completely wrong track. So, <laughs> so you, can, you, can tell us, um, you can tell us in about 10 minutes whether, we, whether, we've, whether we're, we're on the right track or we've gone off the, off the right track. So um, some, where are you all? Come and do your presentation. <laughs> So, so the first thing we'd like to do is to ask any of you if you've volunteered. <coughs> Have you been volunteers? For a show of hands? Okay, that's quite, quite a few. Um, the first thing we felt we ought to do is um, redefine what we meant by the word volunteer. So if I asked that question again and said, have any of you actually volunteered in the context of being on a parents' teachers' association or helped out in your local communities or done stuff with a church or refereed a football match, or done anything else like that. Let's have another show of hands. So considerably more. So our biggest challenge at the beginning was to redefine exactly what we mean by volunteers. Because it's our belief that despite the, the brief that says there's only 150,000 volunteers in Britain, that there are many more. It's just that those people don't talk about it in the same way that some volunteers with a capital V do. They're actually people who do it because they want to help their family or their friends or their children or their communities. And we wanted to sort of um, put the spotlight on those people. So we wanted to first of all look at how we can make volunteering relevant. And of course the easy temptation is to say, well, it's really cool to um, be a volunteer. And to sort of, if you like, offset the sense that volunteering is quite worthy. But actually we decided, no, that wasn't the right way to do it. And we needed to turn the whole concept of volunteering on its head and actually to make it the norm that you volunteer, the norm that people actually are good within. And it's not a strange thing to want to help your fellow man. Um, and that if you don't volunteer, then maybe you're the anomaly. You may be familiar with the story of Tom Sawyer's fence. In the book by Mark Twain, Tom Sawyer is uh, punished by having to paint... Um, Aunt Polly's fence and she sends him out on a hot day uh, with a big tub of whitewash and of course the fence goes on forever and these friends come along Huckleberry Finn, Joe Harper and they say oh Tom you know we're going swimming you know are you coming swimming and he's like no I'm painting Aunt Polly's fence and they're like oh too bad and he's like no no actually I've been chosen to paint Aunt Polly's fence <laughs> and he turns the negative into a positive and before we know it, Joe Harper's given him an apple, Huckleberry Finn has given him his pocket knife, and a whole load of other friends have given Tom stuff in order to paint that fence. And of course, they all go swimming happily. So he's turned something which is potentially um, a bad thing, or not such a cool thing, into something fantastic. And that's really um, the thinking behind um, our idea. Because we have all done some kind of volunteering. And in so doing, we've helped other people. So it's our feeling is that we should, we should make more of that. And ask the question, what have you done? And so we've all invariably been in uh, social situations or dinner parties where the line of conversation goes, oh, hi, yeah, I'm Dave, and what do you do? Oh, I, I work in a city, oh, I work in advertising. And the conversation stops. <laughs> Because we lead such boring lives in reality, <laughs> that there's not a lot to talk about. So we gravitate to, oh, have you been on holiday recently? Or, you know, where are your children at school and so on? But of course, if you volunteer, 
you have this automatic extension to your life. You have this automatic dimension which makes you more interesting. Now, our insight really is summed up brilliantly in the film um, About a Boy, starring Hugh Grant, which, if any of you have seen it, is basically all about how Hugh Grant can get laid. Um, and he, he wants to start dating, so he, uh, he sets up all these dates with different uh, women, one of which is here. And she says, so what do you do? And he says, uh, uh, I do nothing. And she turns away. So he makes something up. And he talks about the fact that um, he's the father of, these, of, of this boy. And that's essentially the premise of the story. But the interesting insight is that we, we need these extra dimensions to our lives because they are what make us interesting. So when we first sat down and talked about our experiencing and volunteering, it was a bit slow to start off with. And then we started telling the stories behind all the different things we've done, small things, big things. And actually, it was really interesting because we'd met different people. We'd done things which took us out of our comfort zone. And we were more interesting people because of it. So our insight is that we shouldn't just be defined by our jobs or our lifestyle, and that volunteering adds an extra dimension to our lives, a desirable extra dimension. And our proposition is, is be more. Be a richer person. Be a more generous person. Be, be more. Have more experiences. And volunteer. So our idea is summed up in the line, volunteering, what's your story? And we'd like everyone to share those stories, whether they're little stories about the small thing you've done, cycling to go and get a pint of milk or an old lady as part of the, um, the, the, the gym, good gym, good gym um, campaign, or whether you've actually done something much more major and given up weeks of your life to do something cool, whether you've dug out the sludge from the bottom of, bottom of a canal or built something um, like a cricket pavilion or whatever. Whatever you've done, there are stories there which you can share. And we all know that stories are a great currency socially, so these things can be shared. So we're going to celebrate how volunteers have made a difference to different people all over Britain. And these are examples of how we can do it. This good-looking young man is... Do any of you know who, who he is? He's David Beckham. And David Beckham, as a young boy, was obsessed with football. He hung a tyre from a goal, and he used to sit there at the end of his um, football club sessions and kick a football through the hole in the tyre. And he'd do ten. He had to do ten in a row before he could go home. And sometimes it would be night time, and the, the groundsman would be waiting to go home. He was a volunteer. So in his small way, he has helped the career of one of the greatest footballers ever to live. So that volunteer has made a difference, not just to David Beckham, but to Britain. And so our thinking is that we will tell that story through the volunteer talking, and then David Beckham could come in and uh, val validate the story of this volunteer. Another one is um, David Hutt. <laughs> <laughs> a very young David Hockney, who, uh, as, as a young man, as a, as a schoolboy, used to have art classes, a Saturday morning art classes in Bridlington, um, was it Bridlington or Bar Barnsley, um, where um, he would go and be taught art um, by volunteers at an art school. So in their way, those volunteers have actually helped shape the career of one of Britain's greatest artists. So... Our thinking is that we will celebrate these stories through showing celebrities and then, of course, the stories of other people who can hark back to how volunteers, in their own small way, have helped their life or more enabled them to have more fulfilling lives uh, in order to promote the whole concept of, uh, of volunteering. But it's more than that because we're going to show how this works all over Britain. So, Elizabeth. I've been volunteered. <laughs> so there are many ways to, to give our time and to volunteer. And of course, we're fresh from the Olympic experience and the, the Games Makers, where lots of people helped make the Olympic Games 
you know, the great games that we speak about now and that we remember now. Um, do I... I just down. Down? I will. We think Britain has a golden heart. You can't always see that heart, but it's there, and it's beating, and it's alive. There are 50 ways to leave your lover, but there are 50 ways to love your neighbour too. And we want to celebrate our 50 years of CSV, our golden anniversary, by finding the top 50 ways in which people make a difference to our country. The top 50 ways that you can give to make Britain a great place to be in, to live in. Whether it's baking cakes, whether it's um, waving a flag on the rugby pitch or the football pitch, whatever it may be, we want to find the top 50 ways that make Britain a great place to be. And we want to find the top 50 volunteers, the top 50 people that you think have made a real difference to GB. I'm now going to hand over for the final bit. So what we were also concerned with was how real is this, how tangible is it? It, it is. And so what we wanted to do was this brilliant campaign would sort of reposition volunteering, trying to make it, sort of normalise it, make it that something that, it's just something you do, it's something you talk about, instead of being something that um, certain people sort of commit to. It's just part of what everybody does. And... So the idea, possibly, would be to drive people, but, you know, maybe sort of local signs in sort of, you know, like the, the, the Tesco um, notice board, a sort of exchange of needs and help. So just want you to imagine the beginning of a possible mobile site, a website, maybe called something like the Good Exchange. Because the thinking underlying this is that it is an exchange. In some respects, I give, but I also want back. And I might be emotionally rewarded, I might be, um, but I might also um, be thanked for my participation. So there's the good exchange. And imagine if you came, we all know that the critical thing is time. Everybody says, I don't have any spare time, I've got you know, too many things to do. So imagine if you could just say, I've got an hour a week. I, don't, I can't do a week. I can't commit to an afternoon. Just how much time have you got? Where's your postcode? Because the other insight was it needs to be very easy to volunteer. So we need to find things very, very local to us, to wherever we are. And then the formula would be, how much time have you got? Where are you? What do you want to exchange? So imagine if you said, I've got an hour, an hour a week. Here's my postcode. Ah, oh, there are 36 requests. Really, really simple. And then up would come, here's your map with the sort of little requests that are being asked. And they might be things like help walking my dog, swimming lessons, school governor, gardening in the parks, Saturday junior football ref, Help with computer, reading to old people, shopping for, oops, spelling mistake, disabled people, meals on wheels, or it could be more traditional actually giving your time to a charity like Save the Children Fund. So the idea there would be that this is how I can very, very quickly learn how, what is going on locally and how I could give an hour of my time. But then we thought about the sort of the big national reflection of this energy, of this giving. So this might be something like a dashboard with the good exchange right now in real time. So what's going on this week or what's going on right now? So you could have the very local thing, and we just came up with the goodometer. So, you know, the local Didsbury goodometer has just hit a new record. There are 14 new requests in this particular postcode. What's the national goodometer doing? Something about a local hero, and then pretty sort of importantly, 4,300 thank yous have just been uploaded from the people who have been helped in whatever way. So that was just 
very, very quick thinking about some sort of platform where people with needs, people with time, skills, whatever, could meet each other and find out how to do something in a really, really simple way. And we, uh, we got some tweets in, and, and you know, one of them, there was a few that, uh, that kind of stood out but, and made us think that we were on the right track. Uh, you know, one was from at Mind Poet, and it said, it's about how it makes you feel inside, volunteering. And I think you know, that kind of sums it, sums it up to us. It, you know, it's not about, it doesn't have to be a showy thing, and none of the, none of, nothing that we're doing is about cool and about, and about showy. It's about you. Um, and, and that's about it, really. I mean, we've got one last slide to show in a minute, but have you got... Are we supposed to do... Are we supposed to throw it open or what? What do you want? Yeah. You're all right for time? Yeah. So if anybody wants to comment, feedback, disagree, agree... All right, then, that's great. With you. <laughs> <laughs> anybody got out to say? Speak now or forever hold your peace? Yeah, go on. We've only had bloody two hours. <laughs> you, you tell us how we get them to the site. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think we have. Well, I think we have to use that thing about, um, you know, that thing about celebrity, isn't it? It's a, it, it is about getting Beckham to, you know, to say that it was that guy. It is about, you know, I know that Alan Shearer always says that he would never have been a professional footballer without, what's that club called in, in Gates? Boys. Walls End Boys Club, without the volunteers from there. You know, you, you, could, you could translate that. We talked about Jessica Innes, Jessica Innes and Steve Cram or always said. So that's just in sport. But you'd be able to translate the same thing. I'm sure there'll be a member of Radiohead or Coldplay or somebody who, who was given the chance at an instrument through, you know, through somebody who said, come to, I'll give you a lesson. You, you, you look at Sir John Sorrell uh, and his wife, you know, they're two of my design heroes, and they always tell me that, number one, they met via Saturday morning art class, and that was a, if nobody, if you, if you type in Saturday morning art school, he's just restarted it. Uh, and, and the whole thing is it's about university lecturers uh, and, uh, and artists giving up their time on a Saturday morning, the university giving up their Giving up, their, giving up one of their theatres and one of their spaces for free. And, uh, and you know, it, it's out there happening all the time, and I think it, all it needs... Uh, I, I'm sure that you... I'm sure that there's people in this room didn't know that that's how John, J John Sorrell got started or, Francis, or, or Lady Frances Sorrell got started. I'm sure that some of you in here didn't know that David Beckham, he, he, you know, he wasn't hothoused from, you know, from, from somewhere. It was a guy who just literally tied up that, that uh, tyre for him and, and kept the ground open while, he, while that kid kicked a ball hour after hour after hour. You know, and that made a, a bloke who sails into the Olympic Stadium on, as James Bond. No, he wasn't James Bond, was he? Or was he? Whatever. He wasn't James Bond. But, you know, he, he made a, a British icon. And, and it could have been that one guy who, who was the spark for it. So just will you just shout up a top? So if you kind of look that, if you can design a website where people can actually put their things that they do very well, because I teach cricket for underprivileged kids when cricket season is. So if you put basically whatever you can do very well or you used to do very well, if you can actually go to organisations where they actually say. I want, to, I want to learn how to do art. So if somebody doesn't have a family or they want to learn how to do art, if there's actually a list of people who's got between seven and eight on a Saturday that they can teach that, they can actually take one of those kids and actually mm. teach them how to do that. So you have people that actually can teach that and then you've got people who actually want to learn that. So mm. all of the little kids that want to learn this trade, they can get... And I think, I think that is the idea. I think, I think the idea is that we've got, we've, we've got to get to the point where we, we believe that everybody wants to pass something on, because we do. You know, most people want to pass the positive things of their, of, of their skills and their life on, and, and most people want to learn. So if we start from that premise, it's a, the, the door is open, really. And it's very surprising that there's only 150,000 people on their list. It's, 
It, it can only be partly through bad marketing, can't it? it, it that must be. It, well, it must be. Yeah. that asks for the postcode, doesn't ask for time, but it asks for levels of interest or what you're interested in. But it's obviously the marketing to get people to the yeah. site that's not in existence yeah, right and, now. And we, you know, we all know what you know, marketing either costs a load of money and you hire Gary Lineker like, like, Les, like uh, Walker's Chris do, and, and uh, the new advert with Matey Boy, what's it? Um, hello? <laughs> Lionel Richie, you knew when I said, it, when I said hello, you knew exactly. <laughs> Uh, you know, so and 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 this, I think, I think this would appeal to the big stars, because uh, I think I think most of them have been mentored. Yeah. Um, do we have enough people in the room, or um, what are you going to do to try and take this forward beyond the nine? Well, I don't know what the I don't know what you've agreed. I'll answer that later. Oh, you're going to get an answer from somebody else on that one. Yeah. <laughs> We're only the monkeys. The organ grinders coming up soon. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's a great idea. One of the problems we often have in the charity sector is when people want to volunteer and they want to do, they want to paint a house for us, or and they offer these time, and, but they don't have the skills, and they might say when they put it in that they tick that they can paint because they've painted one of their walls. But if we want to do a mural for a children's hospice or you know something like that, we want to make sure we've got the best people and those skills, and we're giving those children or those adults everything they need. So it would be great to develop, I guess, that slightly further, is to have a level of what level of skill you have, how many years you've had, and really make sure that we can match those expertise so it's not taking the charities a lot of time and energy to make sure those matches are correct. And that's often where we lose people who are really eager and do want to volunteer. Um, it was just a, a brief comment, really. I think the implementation is, is really fantastic, but how do you avoid um, creating sort of a, a cult of volunteers and a, and a group of... Um, disenfranchised people who, for some reason, maybe ideological, don't want to volunteer, who then become the other, who is, um, you know, disenfranchised and, uh, you know, sit. Well, you're always going to you're always going to have uh, nihilists in society who don't want to, who don't want to take part in society, and you know, you you, you can't. I, I'm a great believer in you believe in the pos you, you, you cater to the positive end of society, and you try to bring the nihilists along, but if they don't come along, it's their problem, isn't it? You know, you can't force people to, you can't force people to be good, but most people want to be good. Right, that's it. Cheers. Cheers.